Well, we could expect again that um, E is going to be constant because of the spherical symmetry. Now, what should I plug in for the enclosed charge? Absolutely right. So what should I plug in for the enclosed charge? Zero. That's right. So a mathematician, you can't just say there is none in math. You have to actually put in a number. Well, the number that represents there is none is zero. That was the whole point of this being hollow. If you draw a Gaussian surface inside of the hollow shell, well, there's nothing inside of it. It's hollow. Remember, where's all the charges? All the charges are up here. Maybe I should have maybe drawn all these little negative signs here. There's a bunch of negative, sign, negative charges on the surface of this hollow sphere, but there's none in the center just because we told, us, we told ourselves this was hollow. So we plug in a zero for the enclosed charge. So what's the electric field going to be? Zero. Yeah, the only way that the left-hand side here can be zero is if E is zero, because the area is not zero. So now the answer is a little bit different than previously. So now we have to summarize this for our complete answer. So how would you get full credit on the exam for this? When you would say E is zero when little r is smaller than big R. Mm -hmm. And E equals K capital Q over R squared when little r is bigger than big R. And for full credit, you'd also have to say what the directions are. When there is an electric field, it's pointing towards the center of, the, of a hollow sphere. So that would be the full credit answer. Now again, the other way to do this is just to look up the formula. If you look in the back of your Gauss's Law chapter, they just have a formula for hollow spheres. And they tell you that E is zero for that. And I put that in the handout as well. So if you look at the handout, there's three cases for spherical symmetry. Outside of the sphere. Notice that if you're outside the sphere, it doesn't matter whether it's hollow or solid. If you're outside, as long as the, um, as long as the charge is symmetrically distributed, you always have the same formula, kq over r squared. The difference is when you're inside a sphere. When you're inside the sphere, it makes a big difference whether it's uniformly charged or hollow. If you're inside a hollow sphere, well, there's no electric field because there's zero enclosed charge mm -hmm. in your Gaussian surface. But if you're inside a uniformly charged sphere, then there would be charge on the inside. So like I said, uh, I'm not really quite sure whether on the test the uh, instructor would allow you just to say, well, the answer here is zero because I looked up the formula. That doesn't seem like enough. So it's, it's good to be able to give the argument from the Gaussian services for that. When you're doing your homework, I, I would recommend trying to do the problems both ways. First, um, try to get them right using Gauss's law, but also um, practice looking up the formulas and getting them right that way. I think uh, uh, on some problems that, that would be acceptable as a, an answer. Okay. Okay, does that make sense? Yeah. All right. This shows how important it is when you're doing the problem to carefully understand exactly what the shape is. Not all spheres are the same. Some are, um, some are solid spheres, for example, and some are hollow.
start by drawing a picture. Okay, and I'll let you uh, try this one a little bit more on your own. So think about how you might get started here. That's a good picture. So how would we go about answering the problem? Sounds good. Great. So it looks like you're trying to figure out what the electric field is, say, over here. And you started by drawing a Gaussian surface, and you correctly saw that the best Gaussian surface is a sphere. Because that would be symmetrical with respect to the source charges. Good. And then you're writing down Gauss's law. Good. That's right. Good. There's no really reason why the electric field here should be any bigger than the electric field over here, because these are both symmetrical with respect to the source charge. So we can rewrite this as our formula for constant electric field. Good. there. So you wrote down the right thing. You said that the charge was negative 1. But what you wrote down was that it was negative Q, which is correct. So what you wrote down was correct. It's not negative 1 Coulomb. It's negative Q, which is exactly what you wrote down. So what you wrote down was good. Remember, though, uh, again, we're really only using this formula for magnitudes. So I'm not going to bother putting in the negative sign. We're just going to use this for magnitudes. Let's review how you got the enclosed charge. Well, what's the total charge enclosed within this Gaussian sphere? Well, there's the plus Q from the point charge in the center, but this is also enclosed. So that's plus negative 2Q. Well, positive Q plus negative 2Q 
is negative Q. So the magnitude of the enclosed charge is just Q. Maybe again, I should put in some dots to show this formula is just going to give us the magnitudes. I, I think sometimes instructors like to put in the signs too, but uh, I think it's more straightforward just to use this for magnitudes. And you correctly saw that this is when R is greater than big R. Little R is big, greater than big R. Okay, good. 